Hello and welcome to DM21 Gaming. My name is Bicycle Walrus, and today we're going to be going over the Gideon boss fight that you get to do at the very end of the campaign. This is actually a really fun fight. I really enjoy doing it. However, it will be a challenging fight and something that will take you a bit of time and patience. So hopefully you have come prepared with both. And let's get to it. For preparation, I recommend having a gear score of about 869 for battling Gideon. However, gear score isn't a very important element to this fight. The first couple of people who defeated Gideon, pre-nerf, did so with yellow gear score warnings, so you can too. Instead, Gideon is all about timing, learning telegraphs, and knowing your class. Gideon is simply a gatekeeper to the endgame. He tests your knowledge of your class. If you can't beat him, you need to sharpen your skills instead of improving your gear score. It's as simple as that. If you find yourself hitting a wall with Gideon, I recommend trying other fights like Corrupted Creation uh, with a buddy and just getting used to watching for telegraphs, dodging, not getting hit. If you can get used to doing that, then Gideon will be a simple fight. Before confronting Gideon, I recommend you acquire 40 potions of recovery and regeneration. Potions of regeneration work on a different cooldown than potions of recovery. This will provide you with an extra heal and ability to recover. This will require friendly faction standing with both her body and Costas royal family. You can buy, with gold, 40 potions of recovery twos from the Costas royal family reputation vendor in Navara. You can also buy, with gold, 40 potions of regeneration twos from the Herbati tribe reputation vendor at the Herbati village in the Conus Mountains. Also, be sure to purchase a Pansia that works well with your class. For the mage, I recommend a Panacea of Destruction to further improve your critical hit damage. Purchase multiple elixirs as chances are you'll die once or twice. Elixirs, unlike Panaceas, do not persist through death. Stone skin elixirs might be your best choice because it will give you a bit of insurance for when you get hit. Now, gearing isn't important as it isn't necessary to defeat Gideon. For example, when I first beat Gideon on my Berserker, I probably had the worst mishmashed set of upgraded gear you've ever seen. Uh, so so it's, it's really not that important. Again, that was pre-nerf. Um, so you'll, you'll want to have a strategy for how to defeat him instead. So for Mage, if you are looking at gearing for the Gideon fight, there are two pieces of gear which will significantly help you in your battle against Gideon. The Scryer's Shoulder Guards, which will reduce the cooldown of Firebomb, allowing you to land two amplified Firebombs, which, yes, is really strong. Uh, you won't have the time to drop a Meteor on Gideon, so two amplified Firebombs will do significantly more damage anyways. So just focus on Firebomb and the Scryer's Shoulder Guards make that possible. The other piece of gear that I have that's going to help me for this fight is the Scryer's Belt, which heals me on Blink. You'll be blinking a lot as a mage in this fight, and any source of healing is critical in this long battle. And to those crafters out there selling those pieces, you're welcome. <laughs> Enjoy the increased demand. Uh, now let's get back to the guide. To save yourself some frustration, have some star seeds and resurrections available. Going back to the pyre and waiting out a resurrection sickness is going to be rage inducing. It takes you out of the fight. Um, it, it, it gives you a lot of time to overthink. I really do recommend that it, it's okay to spend some star seeds to resurrect at this fight. It's just, it's okay. Um, and and I, it, it's got to be frustrating going back to that pyre and waiting out a rest sickness or having to use rest sickness potions or anything like that. It's it's just trust me on this one. Have some star seeds or some resurrections available um, in order to bring yourself back and get immediately back into the fight. Finally, get yourself in the right headspace. You're going to die a couple times. Gideon isn't a terribly difficult boss fight, but mastering his timings. Patterns and telegraphs will take trial and error, particularly for the mage. Now, let's get into strategy. Gideon is a boss you will not be able to just use your biggest combos against and deal massive amounts of damage. It's just not going to happen. 
In fact, this is a fight about taking your time, dodging, and dealing as much damage as you can without taking too many risks or using too much time. Very rarely will Gideon allow you to do a combo longer than four to six seconds. Spotting these opportunities can be tricky at first, but eventually, with some practice, you can identify these moments quickly and capitalize. As a mage, I use the Crested Moon build to leverage the quick cooldown of Firebomb. My objective was to use Firebomb whenever it was available, and then work a short arcane combo in between. Ideally, the goal was to build up mana crystals and to attempt getting two amplified firebombs. As a note, my Crested Moon is not fully leveled up for this gameplay. I had only one blink, and I have yet to unlock the final perk down the firebomb tree. I am heavily disadvantaged in my skill progression for this fight, but I still managed to get Gideon defeated. Once again, it's important to recognize that this isn't about your gear score, nor is it about blessing progression. This fight is purely about your skill level. Are you good enough or not? So come up with a strategy. How can you inflict the most pain in the shortest amount of time without taking risks? And that is the key to success against Gideon. Let's get into all of Gideon's moves, and he's got quite a few that you need to worry about. We'll start with Gideon's Dark Magic of Fire Trails. Gideon will summon trails of dark magic or fire that run along the floor and erupt each time the fire jumps along its path. These take a number of different patterns. These patterns also change over time, making them difficult to predict. In order to avoid them, it is important to remain to the side or directly behind Gideon as these are your safest places to stand. Now there is one pattern that will attack behind Gideon, so if you are a ranged caster, I recommend being a couple feet back if you're going to be behind Gideon. And if you're a melee, you're going to have to memorize the telegraph as to when the fire trail will actually go around him and attack from behind. That's not too difficult to learn, and all you'll have to do is simply dodge back. Once you memorize Gideon's moveset, you can predict which moves he'll make. You can start getting more gutsy, and even stand directly in front of him, but at about 5 feet away. The most dangerous place to stand is directly in front of him, especially when he is casting. His dark fire trails all spawn at the same point, immediately in front of him. Each trail is its own entity and will hit you individually. So standing immediately in front of him will result in your very quick and untimely death as each trail will hit you at exactly the same time, instantaneously delivering about eight to 12,000 points of damage depending on your defense and which ability Gideon was using at the time. This will kill you instantly. So do not stand directly in front of Gideon at any point of the battle. Gideon's Teleport Gideon will teleport around the room frequently, almost too frequently. This will cause you to lose track of him and could even push you to the edge of the arena where you could accidentally reset the fight. Considering this ability can completely restart your run, bear in mind that he may teleport to the edges of the arena, and if you follow him and run past him, the entire fight will reset, costing you precious time and resources. And of course, the run. Gideon's Teleport Bolt Combo. Gideon will add a new trick up his sleeve sometime after the battle begins where he will teleport and immediately shoot a dark bolt at you. Because of this, whenever he teleports, assume the bolt is coming and immediately dodge to avoid the hit. Then there are two triggered events. The first happens at 80% health remaining. When Gideon is at 80% health, a triggered event will occur where he disappears from the field of battle. Now this is an excellent opportunity to concentrate, reload, or recover resources. This is also a good time to get back some needed health. He will then stun you, requiring a LB, RB, right trigger, left trigger, multi-press, quick time event to free yourself. 
This is an easy quick time event. After you free yourself, just simply run to his side and proceed to damage him. He will then shoot a bolt directly in front of him, uh, dealing moderate damage if you are to get hit. Don't get hit. Then at 60%, he will have another triggered event. When Gideon is at 60% health remaining, he will once again disappear from the field and then stun you, and then requiring you to do a quick time event. This time it's the DDR quick time event. Simply input the correct sequence to free yourself. Afterwards, you'll need to dodge the swirling dark magic trails. These hurt and will kill you if you don't have full health. If you manage to survive, you'll need to heal. Getting hit will also stun you. Considering this occurs near the end of the fight, plan on getting hit and make sure you have full health. Also, make sure you have a spare potion cooldown to recover in the event you do get hit. Also, you cannot blink through the trails as a mage. I tried this. I, uh, it's a good way to get hit. So instead, try to smartly time a dodge through them. <sighs> Let's talk about healing and recovery. This may be the first time you're using potions of recovery along with potions of regeneration. Potions of regeneration will heal you over a duration of time, and I tend to use one whenever I take damage. The potion will work long enough to show up any additional healing I need should I take a subsequent hit. Meanwhile, I use potions of recovery for emergency or necessary healing to survive. Since these do not share a cooldown, Having both will significantly improve your ability to heal on demand and will make recovering from a mistake significantly easier. Finally, a word of caution. Pay attention to your location in the arena at all times. If you wander too close to the edge of the arena, you will reset the boss. This is just as bad as dying or being defeated in battle. Gideon will intentionally try to trick you into leaving the bounds of the fight. He teleports to the very limit of his leash. Do not fall for this trick and force yourself to stay in bounds of the fight, even if that means you slow down your attacks or stay out of range until Gideon returns to fight you. Finally, take your time. This fight will punish you for careless mistakes or for being ill prepared. It's okay if the fight takes you 40 minutes to beat. It's okay if you just press X twice, then dodge. Layout two for the win, by the way. That's all fine. What's not okay is trying to force a quick and easy clear only to be defeated and frustrating yourself. Stay calm, take your time, and learn the fight. That's the only way to win. Ladies and gentlemen, Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and hopefully you guys will go on and beat Gideon in no time at all. Please let me know in the comments down below what guide you would like to see next. What should I cover? In the meantime, guys, my name is Bicycle Walrus. This is DM21 Gaming, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out, and have a good one.